Greetings all! Today we're going to be doing the Splatoon Splatfest. And since I'm actually able to get started a little earlier, because I'm actually ready earlier, I thought I would start. So, Deep Cut, Anarchy Space, The Critter Ditters. Alright. I love how they say you lip sync because uh, TikTok is really big on the lip sync trend. So just keep that in mind. And the theme would be, what would you take to a deserted island? Now chat, I am a practical basic bitch. So you know exactly what I'm taking. So see this Splatfest peak. Okay. Well, the mode con shows during the Splatfest sneak peek was I don't even know anything about this. Oh. Great work on the sneak peek. So I guess the gear barely out one grub on the sneak peek. So it's gonna show us the stages. I don't know if I've ever been to these. I played a few games during the test fire and I played um, a couple games today, or a few games today, just to get my uh, feet under me. I kept touching the uh, damn map button instead of the button for... Did I pick a team already? Oh yeah, you had me do that. Okay, or I did that earlier. You did that earlier. I think husband did it for me earlier. So, yep, I am team gear. That's exactly right. One, we're purple, which purple is my favorite color for those of you who know me at all. Um, how do I get to the place I need to get to? That's not right. Okay, let's see. Nope. This is the filter. I gotta get out of here. Oh, damn. How do, how do, okay, how do I take, I've never done this before. Okay, I need to go to the... This thing? No. How to call? <laughs> okay, just get me to the lobby. Oh, god damn it. Wait, was it R1 again? No. What is the button? You have to press X to get there. X to get now there. Now you press L, though. Now I press L. Say no, it was something like that. Okay. We're gonna just jump right in. I don't even know the buttons that well, so this is my favorite weapon. It's the Ratata gun. I love my Ratata guns. And yeah. So I have a slight problem with uh what was gonna be tomorrow's YouTube video, and that is um there is an event on my street, and it's a huge town event, and there's gonna be like live music and lots of people and you might be able to hear some of that out the window when I'm recording and if so I don't want them to be like hey to Lucas town and then we be like fuck I mean it's not gonna be live my video of course so I can delete it but I don't want to not hear when they're saying something that would like I don't want to say incriminate me but dox me so Okay, we're gonna just pop off here. I do ink the base, some people don't. Um, I'm not very good at this game. I just want to let everybody know that. Although I think it's pretty obvious. And I said obvious with a D instead of a B, that's cool. Okay. But yeah, I'm just trying to work through it. But yeah, to me, gear is the most logical choice to take to a deserted island. Grub is not a bad choice at all. Like, definitely not. But the only reason I say, like, tools... Oh, shit. One of the things about Splatoon is I cannot see um, where the critter is, where the critters are. So, yeah, I don't know why I, like, blasted off right there. I can find my friends and, like, go to them, I think. Like... I don't know how, like, I think it's the directional buttons, but I'm not good at any of this, so I'm just going to kind of leave it alone. 
Oh shit. Yeah, I have a hard time seeing people. I am not on my overlay either. I'm just really not good at this. But that's all right. Z, R, when I get ready. Okay. Right. Okay. We're gonna just try to take back some of our, our turf, which, oof. This game has to be really hard for people who are perfectionists. You know, seeing all the different colors kind of meshed in together. Oh, wrong button. Damn. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm not good at this, but it's fun. It is actually fun. I do have fun with it. I'm not gonna play it often. Uh, there are games I like better. Did I actually kill someone? Nice. But yeah, there are games I like better for shooters. And I'm okay with that, like, by a long way, so... But it's still a fun... It's a very interesting concept for a shooter. Like, the main thing is not for you to, like, you know, get everything going on. It's to shit... It's to shit everybody! Okay, let me just... Shit! I got killed by the katana because I'm not good, but that's okay. But yeah, I like that the main thing is to not just... I don't know what the booyah does. Oh wait, that was my amazing thing? Well, I wasted that shit. Oh, hit the damn button again. Let me just get as much as I can. Okay. Oh, that does not look good. That, nope, we lost. Oh, shit. We were close, though. Well, most of the time when I'm on a team, it's a loss, I think. But that's okay. Gear can handle it. It's a big team. But uh, fun might be feisty because it's the underdog. But yeah, to me, it just makes more sense to... I actually was some kind of damage dealer. Yeah, sure. Um, to me, it just makes more sense to take gear than fun on an island. Like, you don't have, like, electricity on a deserted island to play video games. Board games, if the island is deserted, who are you playing with? I mean, if you take a deck of cards, I suppose you could do solitaire. Um, food on a deserted island wouldn't be a bad idea, especially if it had water, like bottled water for your safety, because most islands are not on a freshwater lake. But, uh, if you did find any kind of fresh water source, it wouldn't also not be the cleanest, but if you have a filtration system or straw system that has the filter in it, you could possibly drink out of that fresh water source, so it would still behoove you mostly to bring gear, I feel. Though I do see the benefits of grub. I also see the more benefits of like a first aid kit, of a hatchet and a shovel and stuff like that, so. That's why I picked what I did. It's not sexy or glamorous, but I mean, I would love that you would offer somebody like a shovel, water filtration, a tarp for like, out of, to keep you out of the wind and the rain and shit. And somebody would be like, nope, I want a pack of playing cards and mousetrap. Go, fuck it. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I really want to be around that person, but at the same time, I don't know if I would not, like, if I could even stand not being around that person. <laughs> Just like, that is some major cojones. You know? And you, uh, you need to take your your fun or interesting things any way you can get it. When I die, I'm gonna go back and ink the base. I'll just kind of, oh shit, work it that way. So. But yeah, I think that it's a good thing to do it like that. But yeah, so. All right, so I've been like, not doing too much. Tuesday, I did tell my chat before you guys that I saw the Woman King. Good, historically inaccurate, but good. I mean, you can't expect too much historical accuracy from Hollywood, to be sure. Um, tomorrow, since the thing on the, like, outside my door is happening, 
I might actually go and see what that is because, okay, years ago we had something on the uh, street. We did. It was really cool and really good. And we both exchanged bombs and pe we didn't kill each other because we're dumb. Okay, there you go. Okay, so avenge me, avenge me. But, um, the thing we used to have on our area, in our area, like nearby, uh, was really cool and we had a lot of different street vendors. You know, there were cheese curds sold and for those of you who don't know what cheese curds are, because you're not from Wisconsin or maybe not somewhere that sells it. I know some Culver's in other states do, but um, cheese curds are basically cheese, like a very squeaky cheese, high quality, yum yum, that is deep fried and battered or battered and deep fried, whichever way you want to go about it first. But as far as like, they're battered and deep fried. So imagine you have something as unhealthy as cheese, shit, and you are deep frying it. Anyway, they have cheese curd vendors and they have a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Wisconsin is the dairy state, so, you know, looking at it that way, I guess it makes sense, but I forgot I can travel up walls because I'm a newbie. Shit, I keep getting slaughtered. So. Yeah, I uh, didn't do this right. Well, I'll try to do a little more. Hopefully my friends did better than I did. Oh, we might have a chance. Ugh. Barely. Skin of our teeth. Okay, good. But yeah, so. Hey, I actually got up there for some reason. Let's see. Oh, nothing good enough to list on the on the results page, but not bad. Okay, so, alrighty, ability unlocked. Yeah, I don't know what any of this does. Okay. Nice. Gear fan, yep. We're gonna keep on trucking, because that's what today is about, is the Splatfest. One of the reasons I started uh, this late I normally start at 6 o'clock central, but I knew the Splatfest was starting at 7, so I was like, I'm going to start at 7.30 because... And the big reason for the 30 was because, no lie, I thought the game actually needed to update for the Splatfest. That's how much I don't know or play this game. But like I said, the first one I didn't like because of Gyro, basically being forced on you, but uh, this is much better. Even though I'm still shitty at it. I'm shitty as hell. Uh, communication error has occurred. Our first communication error already, chat. I almost said the communication error. Let's go. I hope it doesn't keep telling me that I uh, did wrong and they're going to boo me from the game. By the way, I love I love my curls. My little curls. I uh, When I'm not a turtle, I do have curly hair. So I appreciate the curly hair represent. I know that nowadays people seem to, at least in America, when they're talking about like dating profiles and shit, uh, apparently straight hair gets more clicks. I mean, not like I'm looking for anybody, obviously. I'm an old married woman. But uh, I just find it interesting that uh, straight hair is considered the norm or the beauty standard right now. Not like I'm into the whole beauty standard thing. I mean, I am a turtle after all, but my shell is pretty glorious. So, that is nice. But yeah, anyway, back to the, the street thing that used to be here. They used to be vendors galore, and I have a weaknesses for purses, very much so. And... My weakness for purses gets me in a lot of trouble when I see a vendor who has a lot of purses. Oh. <laughs> By a lot. Alright, go. Oh, we got a slosher taking care of the base. Okay, I'll 
I'll travel up this way. I know I don't have to exactly, like, do every square inch and in spare tile, so... But still. But yeah, so... Years ago, the town actually got rid of the thing with all the vendors. Oh shit. And, uh... That was very, very sad for me. Because I loved it, and it's so close to home, obviously. But, uh... Now they replaced it with something through a different part of the town. Like, let's say our Chamber of Commerce did one, and then... Like, our Business Association or whatever it is does the other one. Not sure, not given specifics, but I'm just saying something like that. And, uh... The time or two they took it over, it wasn't the same. It just, it honestly is not the, the same. And uh, this time, though, they might be inviting back the vendors, and I'm excited, though I don't have a lot of money. Um, one of the favorite things I bought from a vendor, and this is no lie, I need to hide, I need to hide in the blue. Oh, they got him. Oh my god. My teammate's a goat. I don't know what the booyah does, but uh, my teammate's a goat, so I'm just... I'm letting them know they're the goat, because that was amazing. I don't know, we got a killer on our team who's incredible. Oh boy, they they got me. I know they were going to get me. I could have floated away, I guess, but... Alright, um... I'll go there. So, now that they're inviting the vendors back, plus we're actually getting a candy store or something and I at the end of the year and the person who's running the candy store uh, they're gonna have some of their confections to try at the um, thing and I want to see how like what kind of prices they have and how good their stuff is because maybe I want to order a few things for like a family get together because like my sister and my husband and myself we always have like this Christmas party where we make our own candy and stuff but we uh, exchange gifts and whatnot yep how are you doing Zohar how's it been I started a bit early um, I'm not good at this uh, but nobody expected me to be thank goodness so Yep, we're, we're just painting as much as we can, but we're losing ground like crazy, so. Yeah, I don't think we got it unless people moved, like, way far forward. I don't know. I think it's gonna be them. Yep. Rats. But yeah, so I did intend on the Harvest Stella demo tomorrow. I'm not sure how that's gonna go. Um, especially with the party thing going on here, so I like I don't want like I don't want them to say where I am or I don't want like the music to get picked up and I don't know so I don't know if I'm gonna have to wait until the party's over or do it on Sunday instead or whatever it is, but I do intend on checking out the party. They're having face paint for the kids, which of course doesn't affect me. I don't have children and I'm not a kid, but um. They're also going to have some games. Uh, the classic cars they usually show are going to be on display. So for people who enjoy like classic cars, um, that'll be cool. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking about getting some like shots, like non-identifiable shots, and like maybe posting a couple on my Discord. I'm not sure. I would need to make sure like. You know, nothing can be seen of my town or whatever. But yeah, I'm going to go at least for an hour tomorrow. I could practically crawl uh, to the thing. It should be that close. But I'm going to take my wheelchair instead of just crawling out there. Because, you know, people are weird when you're on the ground. For some reason, it freaks them out. Uh, one time, uh, my um, postman, who doesn't work anymore, he was, like, really freaked out. When I answered the door and I was on my knees instead of in my wheelchair and he's like, should I call someone? Did you fall out of your wheelchair? I'm like, no, no, no. It's, it's fine. It's fine, dear. 
you know. I'm like, Keith, it's good. Um, I'm fine. This is just how, how life is. Oh damn, I got demolished. I'm sorry you're feeling under the weather. Is it the normal stuff or is it something else? I hope you feel better soon. Oh, they're already all the way to our base. This is not good and I don't know why I'm blinking. Oh, somebody was targeting you with something maybe? Okay. That is uh, something else. No, 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 shit. Well, somebody, uh, I don't know. Did I pick them off? I hope I did. But yeah, like I said, they're this far back. I don't think, oh no. Shit. Every fucking uh, special move on the way down. I'm getting it every time. Okay, let me just... Can I pick this person? I have no idea what I'm doing. I have zero idea what I'm doing. Okay, nope. Shit. Oh, please get him. Please, Mr. Slosher. Miss... MX Slosher. Nope, probably not. Yeah, we're gonna lose this one again. And I think it's my fault. I'm not a very strong teammate. Like I said, this game has to be really tough for perfectionists. Can you just imagine trying to, like, play out the world and, like, there's, like, one little bit of pink and you're like, oh, I can't move on. Oh, shit. That is a huge, huge, um, special they got going on there. Maybe I can pick the... I can probably pick the, uh, thing... Uh, before I jump, so maybe that would be a better thing to do. Oh shit, the minute I get out. Oh, I hope you're not getting a cold. You know, you barely go outside, so I can't... Um, you know, that's, that is something that ticks me off. Like, I stay in the house a lot. And one of the reasons I stay in the house a lot or my apartment a lot, I guess, to be more accurate, is, uh, I stay here a lot to make things- Ah, shoot. Okay, somebody got him for me, at least. Uh, to stay healthy. You know, I don't want to expose myself to a shitload of germs, so... Oh, no, I think we lost. I hope not, though. Yeah, I thought so. Anyway. I do it to make sure I don't get exposed to germs. And then something happens where, like, husband will be out somewhere and somebody will be sick around him even though he wears a mask. And then I'll get a cold for no reason. Like, last summer, uh, before, I, before I went into the hospital, uh, husband and I had actually had a really bad, like, cold, which turned into a sinus infection, which turned into a different kind of infection for me which landed me in the hospital because my body can't deal with shit. So we actually thought we had the panini and we didn't, but to this day, we still don't know how the hell we actually got that other virus that went through our house and uh, wrecked me because we were doing everything we could to keep healthy and not uh, get sick. So, I never know, like, what's going on half the time. But yeah, I might go out tomorrow. And, uh, I already went out on Tuesday. And then, okay, so if I go out tomorrow, I went out Tuesday to the movie theater to see The Woman King, like I said. And then Wednesday, I'm going out for more blood work, but it's just the weekly stuff. Um... For the longest time, they didn't have last month's blood tests in the thing. And then I just recently figured out that it is... How do I put this? I got my blood test results back. And I have a few numbers that are really, really funky. And then, like, I think it's like three numbers are off. And one number is, like, obscenely high. And the other number is, like, kind of high. And the other number is just, like, a little bit low. So I'm not going to worry about that. 
Um, so, but the one is my inflammation. My inflammation is, of course, really high. It always is. And that's one of the reasons we thought I had rheumatoid at one point, and then we thought I didn't have rheumatoid, and then... So I might actually have rheumatoid or something else is going on. Oh, so maybe your body just didn't handle the change well? I hope that's all it is. I hope it's not anything severe. It's taking a bit to get the matchmaking going, unless I'm getting disconnected again. And I don't know, like, how to do that. Okay, what is that telling me? I did something wrong. Okay, I'm still in the waiting room. Okay, hold on. So, I think I know what I'm doing next week for streaming already, but it might be possible that I don't. Because I don't know if I'm going to be doing... I think I'm going to be doing Monster Hunter twice again next week. But I think my last stream of the week, I want to be... Dandy Ace. One of the games that... Okay. I'll try it again. I'll try it again, Nintendo. I'll try it again. Okay, parting the interruption. Fresh vibe. Okay. Yeah, I haven't checked out the stores yet. Doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, uh, my inflammation's like really bad. And I'm not sure of like what's causing that exactly. And I'm having an issue with my thyroid, it seems like. But not the type of issue she thought. So I might have to have that looked into more, but uh, with my inflammation, it's always high enough for so there to be an underlying health condition, and I'm like, okay, what could be wrong? And it's like, well, you could have kidney malfunction, and I'm like, oh, don't talk about my fucking kidneys again. So it all depends. I, I mean... In some ways, I'm doing better than I thought because I'm basically like a rusty bucket on wheels, but... In some ways, I'm kind of looking at it going, oh, because some of the things, like, they could strip my heart vessels. <laughs> and I'm like, if uh, inflammation is uh, made worse by stress, I'm pretty borked because uh, I am always stressed out about everything in my life and what I'm doing. And, you know, I've tried journaling. I've tried meditation. I've tried pretty much ev everything. Whoops. No, no. I've tried everything I can think of, pretty much, to make it not so damn bad. Where are you? Prick. Oh, yes! Got one person! And this one's gonna kill me, so let me just kind of run away. But, uh... Yeah, let me just get up here. Okay, so... Yeah, after a while, like, some of the things that go wrong apparently can strip the heart vessel or your heart vessels and everything, and I'm just, I'm just like, oh, that, that does not sound good, so. But yeah, if it's stress, I might be, uh, in trouble because, uh, I'm not good with stress at all. Uh, and I've tried numerous things to fix that throughout my entire life, uh, and, uh, it really doesn't work. And some of the things they say do work that I really haven't tried, I really can't do much. So, like, go on more walks. Well, if I want to be in more physical agony, I could go outside more. If I want more potential illness, I could definitely go outside more. I mean, like, literally, there's only so much, ooh, that was nice, I can do with everything. So, I have to just keep into account what is possible and try to get it done. You know? That's like all anybody can do, I think, after a while. So. I'm just hoping my inflammation has nothing to do with stress. I'm hoping no inflammation has anything to do with stress. And uh, I'm hoping I just keep on trucking. Because uh, that would be pretty damn bad. Fuck. Oh, did we get each other? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Yep, I've actually tried, like I said, pretty much everything known to man. 
But yeah, I've been thinking about what to do with, uh, on a different subject, because I switch subjects a lot. I've been thinking about a lot about what to do starting with the uh, week after next, and, you know, because that's Halloween and my favorite time of year. But, uh, one of the things I've really been thinking about, I don't know if I can get up there and then, like, okay, go to, go to that person, yeah. So, one of the, th I landed right next to somebody that's not good, shit. Um... So I've been thinking about what to do, and my brain says, which means I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking that I might want to try, we lost two different movie nights. We never win with me. Like, we've only won one game so far. It's that bad. Uh, anyway, um... I don't know if both movie nights have to be like Halloween related or what, but I do want to try two different movie nights at some point. Um, I'm not sure what I'm starting with, but it's just some things I'm thinking about. And one of the story times I kind of wanted to do, which I don't know if there'd be like enough story time, is like some of the weird shit I've gotten into over the years. Like, and I might have told this story, like the time. I was almost the leader of a cult online. I don't know if I've told that story, and I don't know if that would make a good Halloween story, but uh, it was kind of creepy. And uh, I may fudge some details, or I might tell it straight, but then I won't tell any everybody like what the truth is. And I'll just be like, this is a fictionalized account of what happened, that way like people don't look at me weird, but yeah. There was actually a time I was going to be a cult leader. Or people wanted me to be a cult leader, I guess I should say. And yes, cult leader. Like, compound. Like, bringing their spouses to meet me and get my blessing for things. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, I, I might do that story... Like, maybe fictionalized, maybe tell it straight, and I won't tell you which one. But, uh, yeah. And it just involved me meeting someone online. And how, how what kind of a turn that took. And, uh, why he saw me as a literal deity on Earth. And that was really weird. And I, at first I thought the guy had something, um... How, what, how do I say this politely? He, he was not in my reality. <laughs> but, uh, uh... No, it was actually much worse than that. And he wasn't... He was in my reality. And he was 100% serious. So... Yeah. Not to get money out of me or anything. <laughs> Half-truths, yeah. Yep, I, I will I will tell it, but I thought, oh, second communication error, let's go Nintendo. At least it's not in the middle of a match, so you're not kicking me out and thinking I'm doing naughty things. Okay, here we go. But yeah, so I thought about telling that one. But I don't know if that's good for Halloween or not. So... Because if I tell ghost stories, it'll probably be some of what I already said the first time. You know. I mean, I could talk about the killers I've met, but, like, that's kind of boring, I think. You know. And not really Halloween-y. Uh, yeah, he could definitely get to me, but I mean, like... At first, I thought he was not, let's say, sane. Uh, he, he was a truck driver from a neighboring state. And I'll call him Cam. So, yeah, Cam uh, was a friend of mine. But yeah. And uh, turned out weird. Turned out really weird, and, um, I'll tell it as a half-truth, or a whole-truth, but it involves paranormal shit. 
So that's why I thought it might be interesting for Halloween. Because it involved paranormal shit. And what it what it means when you trust someone on the internet. And back when I used to be different. Apropos of nothing, I also thought about giving tarot readings. Cause I uh I have a tarot deck. Shit. Yeah. I have a tarot deck. And I thought about doing tarot card readings, but I gotta tell you, I'm not gifted in tarot. That is one thing that it's bullshit. I'd have to like make it up or like research every reading because I'm just not good at it. I've seen people give like fake readings based on what the cards look like. And those are so fucking funny. I might just, I could just do that. But yeah, I actually own a deck of tarot cards. My mom was actually against me owning tarot cards. She thought it was kind of like a Ouija board where you don't let things into the house. But uh, I convinced her it's just basically a tool. It's not even like contacting people like on the other end. It's just like asking a question. And I honestly think that it can be... How do I put this? It can be a good tool for people to like talk about their lives and if they see something similar in it, like investigate that. I don't know how to put that appropriately. Oh, well, another round we're losing because they're in our base that far. That's okay. Okay. Get him, get him, get him. Shit. Okay, somebody else did. But yeah, so... Shit. But yeah, so... I do have a deck of tarot cards, but like I said, I don't think tarot is like very Halloween. I think people get like a lot of things misconstrued about things like divination. But like I said, it, it all becomes apparent after a while, like... I think my mom felt better when I was not, like, really gifted at it. I, like, took him to high school and stuff because, you know, I was around that time of my life. But, uh, Cam, the trucker, he was, uh, in my early 20s, uh, before, well, maybe 19. Let's say 19 because I met my husband at 20 and I don't think I was still talking to Cam at that time because Cam eventually freaked me out. And people would be like, oh, the story's not true, which is why I'm gonna tell you right now. It'll be half truth, even if it sounds like total lies, maybe it'll be the whole truth. We'll just play it by ear, but I thought it would be interesting and oh, maybe we won for once. Maybe, 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 nope. Still not, damn it to hell. Ah. <sighs> I was hoping. I, I think I keep my team down really a lot. Well, hey, Cheesy. How's it going? Nice to see you. But yeah, I know parents are afraid of Pokemon, but uh, my mom saw it as an actual divination tool, which it, I, I guess it can be. But I just, I liked it. It was cool. I love the priestess in tarot cards. Thank you! I have all the little, like, freebie places I get my stuff from. How was Phasmophobia last night with Avalon and the gang? Was it good? I think it was Phasmo. Do you get scared of that game still? And tell me, True, are you uh, a fan of Fatal Frame? You killed them only a little. <laughs> You know, the first time I saw that game played, I was like, oh my god, what is this? It looks so intense. People were screaming, people were hiding, and then it's like, when I saw the first person die, I laughed my dick off, and then, uh, yeah. You got, what is Aiko? 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 I don't speak anything other than English, and not even very well. 
I think we might get another disconnect, peeps. Uh, I've been getting quite a few disconnects, but thankfully it's only been in the lobby thus far. So, that could be worse. Ah. Uh, oh, you like to scare people. Oh, hey, Avalon. We were just talking about you from the other uh, night. The Welcome, Raiders. My name is Toluca Turtle. I am a fall mouth turtle who talks about poetry, disability justice, the paranormal, crafting, and just any fucking thing I can get my hands on. You straight up murder folks? That sounds amazing, Cheesy. So basically, you are the demon. I get that. Hey, Avalon, how was your stream? Was it fun? What were you doing? Tell me all about it. I hope it was amazing. Well, you are the Eldritch Horror Cheesy, so I, I sort of get that. I mean, who who isn't gonna... Oh, I thought of you the other day when I saw that crafting thing. The I Love Crafting, but it's I Love Craftian, and it's like a little Cthulhu monster, like, knitting. Generation Zero. Okay, I'm a doof, because what is that? I think we're gonna get kicked out, so let me just... Well, I'll wait till Nintendo says bad to Luca bad. Naughty, naughty. Thank you, Chow Chow Guy. I appreciate it. Welcome. I hope you don't regret your time here. Not enough players again. Are there literally that many gearheads that for grub and stuff? Okay, anyway, we're going to try this again. Come on, Nintendo. You give me one good game and then you blue ball me. Don't do this to me. It's a game where you have to fight robots in 1980 Sweden. That's an actual interesting concept. I hope it's fun. <laughs> yeah, we follow each other on Twitter, I think. Don't we, Chow Chow Guy? I do that all the time where I follow people on Twitter. And then when it comes time to follow them on Twitch, I'm just like crickets. Like, I love them and I mean to follow them. But my brain just doesn't like go to their page and then find their link and then click over <laughs> yeah I have that problem thank you for following Avalon it is lovely to see you all here this is probably going to be my only Splatoon 3 stream um, I am not a Splatoon head like some people are I borrowed my copy from husband to uh, play a little bit of the Splatfest tonight and it's going as well as you'd expect a badly coordinated half blind turtle to play, which is not well. And I think we've only ever, we've won one game so far this whole time. It's been an utter, uh, probably pain for my watchers, but that is okay. I am just having fun. I'm spraying all over like I laughed too hard after Chipotle and we're working it all out. So, ah, uh, strawberry ink. I really wish they'd give me the white or red stuff more. You know why. <laughs> yeah, like I said, Chow Chow, I do that so often. Where I'm just like, oh, this person has such great tweets. Does not go to Twitch. Does not follow on YouTube. Like, although my YouTube, I use my real name, so... It, it kind of gets weird if I like follow them and they're like, who is this person with actual name? Oh shit, I didn't kill them, but thank goodness my teammate avenged me. Okay, let's hop over. Let's use the damn map to go to... Oh, all my teammates are here. Never mind, never mind. Here I'm like, I'm gonna fly far away. Yeah, no, no we're not. Oh, no, 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 fuck, fuck, nope. Get away from me. That's the killer way. Uh. I know it's killer way, oh, but oh well. Please don't kill me. I love my strawberry sherbet. Ah! Ah, fuck. Yeah, that's, that's not gonna happen. So, yeah. I've just been talking to Zohar about what I plan on doing for... Halloween. I do have Pumpkin Jack on deck for a Halloween game, and 
I am gonna try to play some Doom Eternal. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get through the whole game. Yes! Followed him instead of inking the floor. It's about vengeance now. No, I'm kidding. Ooh! Two kills. That's like more than zero. Like, I'm doing well. <laughs> oh, shit. Roller taking me out of my, my, uh, swag there. But yeah, so, man, we are so, look at how far they've inked up. We are so dead. We are so dead, dead, dead. No, no. Fuck. But yeah, I have Pumpkin Jack. We're gonna do... I'm not gonna do Diablo, but I'm thinking about doing State of Decay 2 if it's still there. I, I have a State of Decay 2 problem and I really like it, but it might be kind of boring, but we're gonna try it. I'm trying not to do too many overtly horror streams for Halloween because I know it's gonna sound weird, but I don't really believe in like horror being like a Halloween thing necessarily. But I know a lot of people do, so yeah, we're we're toast. I might do lost and random. Oh yeah, we we lost big. Ugh, again. I swear to God, I'm like a lead la uh, weight around the ankles of my team. I am like our own cement shoes from the Mafia. I am doing that well. So, yeah. And, I, okay, so also, I was thinking about... Oh, I got a splat assist, though. That was good. Yeah, the obscene amount of candy I agree with, but... To me, Halloween is, like, more nostalgic and or sacred. But I know people indulge in horror, so I kind of want to do that. But, like, on my own time, I'm not going to do that. But I might actually do a couple of Discord movies. Uh, I'm not sure which ones. I am going to try to do it off of our um, streaming services. Possibly. Because if I do it off of our DVDs, like... Sometimes it doesn't transfer right through to uh, Discord. So... <laughs> well, I'm coming to your house, Chow Chow Guy. Um, we live in an apartment, and when we first moved here, we used to live in the country, like 25 miles out of town. And so nobody came down our, like, quarter of a mile gravel driveway. Like, pretty much nobody. And so we never had trick-or-treaters. Uh, I never went trick-or-treating as a kid because my mom didn't trust people with, like, what they gave us and stuff. So, um, we used to just have candy at home. Well, when we moved here after husband and I got married, uh, I thought we were going to have a lot of kids because we were, like, on the main drag of town. And I was like, yes! Finally, we're going to be able to like the first year I made up all these elaborate bags of candy and I we had all these decorations up for like the windows so that kids would know that we had candy and I had like little spider rings with the candy and little pencils with cute erasers. I like went all out and made like these big like bags of stuff that had all kinds of different stuff in them candy and non candy for little kids. We did not get one, one trick-or-treater, not one. And uh, they don't trick-or-treat here, and I only figured that out after that. And I was hoping they would, but our town really does weird shit with trick-or-treating. Like, it tries to get it really far away from the holiday itself. And they're like, no, we just try to do it like the Saturday before. No, they don't. They literally have done it on Sunday. They actually try to wreck it. And the reason being is because this town is like really conservative to the point where they just want the kids to go to like the middle school and trick or treat that way. Shit. Or they want them to go to like one of the harvest fairs at churches. So. They hauled the kids with a tractor? That sounds really cool. Yeah, we don't we don't have anything like that like here. But yeah, they usually want the kids to do the fall thing. They don't like the kids running around. And uh, usually they don't want them running around late. So trick or treats only to like 6 o'clock or so in our town. Like 4 to 6. Or something really, really, really short. 
<laughs> oh, really? Well, you know, your, your dog is precious, though, so it was worth it, I'm sure. I know you love your pets very much. I've seen. You're such a good pet parent. I've seen the pictures and cute little sherbet laying on you and it, it's all very adorable. I miss having pets to be honest. I used to have pets all the time. Birds and a rabbit and we've had various fish and cats, dogs. I had a turtle once. I had one of my own kind. I loved him. I was really tiny when I got him, but he didn't last very long because some turtles in captivity don't honestly last that long. And Jesus, I keep getting slaughtered. I honestly didn't know that. I mean, I know they do that to like uh, pit bulls, but I didn't know they were on ban lists. That's really sad, honestly. Oh, yeah, I've only heard it with pitties for the most part. Although I've heard some people ban, um, what the hell is it? Like Rottweilers and Dobermans. Which, my grandmother had a Rottweiler and my grandfather had a Doberman and they were the nicest dogs. Especially the Doberman. Uh, he had, like, bare spots on him and everything. God, we keep losing because of me. Oof. That was a total trounce. But yeah, uh, Damien was my grandfather's dog's name. And Damien had like pink spots on him because uh, I think my grandma and grandpa forgot that he was tied to the door handle or the people they, he, they got him from. I don't remember. But anyway, they somebody dragged him accidentally, supposedly, uh, for, by a car for a while on the road. And he had places where his fur just would not grow back. But he was the nicest dog. He would never hurt anybody. He was always very, very gentle. Uh, very sweet dog. And it's like people think that so many dogs are just such bad breeds. Like the whole breed is bad. And it's like they're not though. I mean, you can breed for temperament. Right. Right. Exactly. Same thing with Tessa, which was my grandma's Rottweiler. And my grandma had a German Shepherd once, literally named Vicious. Oh, Chihuahuas are very, very mean dogs. Chihuahuas are very, very, very mean dogs. And I've seen like little, like, I want to call them muffin dogs, but the little white ones. Not Yorkies, but something like that. Uh, I've been nipped and bit by more of those little white fuzzy damn dogs than I have the giant ones. Seriously. Um, oh, purple back to my favorite color. Yay! Makes me happy when I'm losing. Okay. But yeah, so I miss having animals. And I technically could get one, theoretically, because... They would just like label it an emotional support animal or whatever, but I'm like, nah. I mean, I'd want to be able to like take full care of it. And unfortunately, I'm allergic to cats. And when I say I'm allergic, I am one of those shit, very lucky people who has asthma to the point where I need my rescue inhaler after a while if I'm with something that makes me, uh, if I'm allergic to it, so it's very difficult for me, and I literally took myself off of him. Damn it. So, um, I don't want to have to use my rescue inhaler a lot. Okay, there we go. Shit, I thought I got rid of that guy. Oh, I guess I did. Oh, yeah. Well, mildly allergic's not too bad. You know, a little discomfort might be worth it for your babies, but, uh, yeah, I just, I get rescue inhaler bad, and, uh, I try not to use my inhaler if I don't absolutely have to, so. I wasn't that allergic to cats at one point in my life either. This sucks. <laughs> I like a lot of animals, though. My grandpa had a boa constrictor. I really liked the boa constrictor. 
Um, I'm a little leery with snakes because I don't know which ones are venomous or which ones can cut off the circulation of my entire fucking arm, but I actually like snakes fairly well. My mom always had a problem with rodents, so that was a, a rough... Oh, damn it! I thought I killed them. I did. Yeah, E.T. was a pretty good snake. Uh, Grandpa wouldn't let us hold him because we were all pretty small and uh, he didn't want anything happening to us, but yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool. You know, I don't really blame him for that because you don't want anything to, like wrap around your grandkids. Uh, Grandpa was really my grandma's boyfriend, not biologically my grandfather, but for all intents and purposes. Oh shit. Yeah, I've seen the triangle thing with the snakes. And I just, I don't want to get close enough in the wild to find out. Like, I know, like, people who milk snakes and they have, like, missing fingers, but that's, like, a really necessary job. You know, snake milkers are the reason we have, like, the anti-venom we do. So, we are so boned. Look at, look at all this one shit. Shit. Oh well. We lost again. Oh, that was a trouncing. My god, that was a trouncing. It keeps getting worse. Yeah, I live in Wisconsin. We don't have them here, thankfully. Although the DNR, um, the DNR did something where we had a certain type of bug, okay? I'm not saying what it is, I don't care. That's not the point. We had a certain kind of bug, so then the DNR released turkeys to eat the bugs, and then the turkeys got out of hand, so then they released... Oh, what the fuck was it? Well, did we get... I don't remember which kind of snake it was, to eat the turkey eggs, and then the snakes got out of hand, so then they started releasing, like... Uh, shrews, mongoose, something that eats snakes, okay? Something that eats snakes. And I feel like we're in this very weird... Oh, that's interesting. But yeah, I feel like we're in this very weird swallow the spider to catch the fly thing. You remember that song from when we were kids, right? There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. Perhaps she'll die. Then there was an old lady who swallowed a spider that wriggled and jiggled or whatever inside of her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. That That's our DNR, basically. They, they released the turkey to catch the bugs. I don't know why they want the bugs gone. Perhaps I'll cry. Then they released the snakes to swallow the turkeys to they wanted the bugs. It's just... Yeah, it's one of those things where it just gets more convoluted and you're just waiting to have the lady swallow the horse, basically. Yep. Yep, exactly. You're just waiting for her to swallow the horse. So, that is the way it is. I don't know why, but the DNR knows better than me, of course. So, I'm just like, alrighty then. Oh, we have liquid gold. Very nice. Or orange juice, whichever one you prefer. Oh, yes, I remember I can take the grates. Like I said, I don't really play this much, so... Everything I'm remembering, I'm remembering from watching Husband do it or whatever. Are they coming around already? Shit. Let me just jump up here and try to cover up their mistakes. Oh yeah, House on the Rock. I actually didn't go, but it, it's one of the like primary field trips for my old grade school. Ah damn, I was shooting them in the face. I thought they'd die. But uh... But yeah, our old grade school, they used to take us to uh, House on the Rock. And like, I think it was a, like the mandatory fifth grade trip or the obligatory fifth grade trip. I've been to a few places, like we went to Lambo and stuff like that. My sister actually just got done going to a Brewers game recently. I think it was last weekend actually. So, 
she actually got a uh, foul ball from the Yankees when they were at our stadium. So that was pretty cool. Or our field, I guess I should say. I am not into sports at all. So I'm one of those people that looks at basketball and goes, did you get the field goal? It's, it's like that bad. But my sister, she loves them. She's like talking to me about their strategies and why this person's a bad head coach. And I'm just like, yep, go ahead, Suze, go ahead. Yeah, eclectic art can be pretty cool. Like, what's your favorite, like, in terms of art? Like, I'm not very good with the whole art thing, but my baby brother is, like, studying to be an artist with a capital A. And, uh, one of his influences is, like, Rothko. So... And I'm like, I don't know what that is, baby pro. Like, outsider art. Are you talking like, how do, I, how do I say this? Like when people like dabble in like graffiti or like people who do like 3D sculpture that's like of fallen objects or like people who do weird stuff like room installations. Cause I've seen like some really cool like luminescent rooms. Ah, damn it to hell. Yeah. 85, eh? That was a great year. No particular reason. Says at 37 years old. Ah, fuck me. Well, I understand that. I think we lost again. I'm sad. Oh, <laughs> like, I cannot help my team to victory. I think I am literally the dead weight here. I bet if I quit, like, they'd win the next 17 games in a row. But we're gonna keep on trucking. Cause that's what we do. <sighs> yeah, I understand what you mean. Formal training can kind of get in the way. In a strange way. Like, okay, for writing, which I'm more familiar with, but it's technically an art form. Uh... People talk about, like, MFA voice, which is Masters of Fine Arts, because so many people, when they go through the workshops and get their degree, uh, they turn out kind of to have a similar voice, because the people who go through those workshops, they all go through the same program, and they have the same instructor, and they all read the same things, so they end up having a very specific type of voice, a type of work, the same types of characterizations that go on, unless they can unlearn it or keep true to their own self and use the tools and remake the tool set into something that they can better handle on for their own work, they end up sounding the same. It just all sounds similar. Like, oh, here's another person who lives in New York. Oh, here's another person who, like, deals with the consequences of divorce. And I mean, certain themes are, like, timeless. Like, death, divorce, remarriage, like, that kind of thing. Like, certain things are universal. Like, love, grief, whatever. Bukowski was actually an interesting fellow. His work was actually really interesting. I'm not a fan of him as the way he was as a person. But yes, he speaks to a lot of people because he was very anti-establishment. Um, he had very good uh, rules for writers. Like, you better do this for you, basically. But he was a troubled dude. But you know, so many artists and writers are troubled. Ah, shit. I'm never gonna get a hand up. Yeah, very unpleasant, but very real. Good way to put that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yep. But, you know, I'm not trained in the ways of uh, most writers either. There's somebody up there, so I don't want to, like, go up there. Like, let's go down here. Let's go down here and pray, shall we? Let's make some inroads. Unless someone kills me. Okay, then. Sounds good. That is true. You know, and people, they start to like, oh shit. Oh yes, got somebody. They start to uh, write for what they think people will enjoy 
or write what is palatable for people and not what is necessarily real. Shit. <laughs> I think there's a space for every type of writing. But the thing is, okay, it's like Instagram poetry, and, I, and I've gone on about this before. Like, a lot of, like, hashtag real poets, and I'm a poet by trade, so I can kind of speak to this. A lot of poets disparage Instagram poetry. And they disparage Instagram poetry for one thing, being too simplistic. And I'm like, no, 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 that's where you're wrong. Uh, simplistic stuff actually can reach more people if it speaks without pretension, if it speaks directly to the core without any other kind of thing getting in the way. Like, so many people, they come away from school thinking they hate poetry, thinking that it's just like the worst art form, that they don't like it, that it's not useful, that it's like antiquated and esoteric, and it, it's not. And I think what Instagram poetry does, oh, we tried so hard and it didn't matter. Oh, that's like really, really bad. Oh, holy shit. Well, ouch. I don't know if Gear is winning this one, I gotta tell ya. But... Yeah, like, okay, in high school, they make us read Shakespeare. Now, there is a lot of brilliance to Shakespeare. But when you're a kid, you even get different stuff out of Shakespeare. Because, like, the thing they made us read in ninth grade was Romeo and Juliet. You know, and when you're a ninth grader, not me, but... Most of the average ninth grader. When you're an average ninth grader, you're like, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, how romantic. Oh, how exciting that they want to be with each other. And it's like, uh, they were two children who loved each other for like, what, all of three days, six days, less than a week. And it ended with six people being dead. So tell me again how this is like romantic and delightful and so many people have this, like, romantic notion of Romeo and Juliet. It's not. When you first meet Juliet, she's practically holding, like, a stuffed teddy bear or something. Like, in her pajamas or something really weird. Like, they really, like, hammer home that Juliet is basically a child. Like, yeah. Or, you know, getting swept up or not thinking clearly or, yeah. And of course, you know, hating people just for the sake of it and all that too, but um, people think it's a very romantic story. And it's not a romantic story, it's a fucking cautionary tale. But when you're a ninth grader and you hear about this like 15 and 17 year old being in love and defying everyone just for a few happy moments together and that you could die for the person you love. Now, I don't remember who said this. But I, I love this quote. And I think about it a lot as someone who's gone through depression. It said, Dying for something is easy. Living for something is hard. And in so many ways, that is so true. You know, trying to make it work, trying to make things better, trying to stay here and work on it. That's the hard part. And I, I, I agree with that so wholeheartedly. And, uh... But, you know, Shakespeare was brilliant. His plays are timeless. Um, he created a lot of the words we have now, like Bloodstained is his word. He had some really amazing zingers for, like, when people were shitting on his work and all that fun stuff. So he was a, a pretty cool dude in some respects. However, uh, I think people really hang up on his stuff to the point where a lot of people end up hating poetry because if that's what you're given and the language he used is not approachable for modern day audiences I'm sorry it isn't but you can I'm not saying you don't learn what that is there's just so much it's like okay in the movie Renaissance Man with Danny DeVito 
which is an oldie, but I fucking love it, okay? It's corny, it's kind of horrible, I love it, it's fine. Okay, so he was talking about dissecting one of the passages in Hamlet. And he, the passage is like, cast thy knighted color off, uh, look upon me like a friend of Denmark or something, I don't remember quite what it is. But cast thy knighted color off means stop mourning, but it's like, when you're like a 15 year old kid reading Hamlet, you don't associate that with that. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I just think that when we teach it, I don't know if we teach Shakespeare at the right age, for one thing. And what we don't teach instead is a lot different. Oh yes, I got him with his uh, gigantic hammer. I'm so happy. That's probably like the best play I'm ever gonna have right there. So yeah, okay. But yeah, and then we don't introduce kids to a lot of other stuff. Like, I remember this Twitter thread about can my, like, graduate student, and we're talking graduate sc school at this point, not even high school, can my graduate student do their poetry final on Kendrick Lamar? And it's like, why not? Why, why not on Kendrick Lamar? And there was a big whole debate as to whether somebody can use a record, an album, as the kids call it now. God dang it, another loss. <laughs> but, uh, it was a good movie. Okay, if you haven't seen Renaissance Man, it's about Danny DeVito, who gets a job teaching at a military base uh, basic literacy for what they consider the students with the low IQ or the underperforming students. Like, they have to get a certain type of proficiency intellectually and they're considered like the unit that's dumb in for lack of a better word and so they have a class with like the dumb kids and you know the recruits that are and I want to say kids but they're probably adults I mean they're in the military but they're young they're young and I'm I'm old so that's what we'll say and he's trying to get them to like learn how to do all this and eventually he's just like bring something to read from home and they go through what they're reading and one of the kids says to him when he's reading Hamlet what are you reading about a little baby pig and he said it's not and then he starts teaching them Shakespeare and because Shakespeare does have like the themes in it of betrayal and heartache and rebuilding and just all the different like universal whatever um, and what camaraderie means, uh, they actually become like a unit. You know, like a better, well-practiced unit, a more well-read whatever. Uh, Gregory Hines was in it. Stacy Dash from Clueless. It was actually, I it's corny and bad, but at the same time, I really loved some parts of the movie. Like when they do the like rap from the Hamlet rap, I, I almost died, but not in a good way. But like it was so good in some ways. So, and, but so many people don't know about that movie. And I'm so old that I can now tell you like some of my really old like favorites, but like I said, I think we teach um, Shakespeare at the wrong age. I think we kill along with like all the other old oldies of uh, literature, all the old white men, by the way, we're, we're going to talk about that at some point as well, just because the canon is what was taught in their classics. And I'm not trying to peel away the classics like Mark Twain and whatnot. Also, you have to remember what isn't being taught to your children. Like, I had a uh, class in high school they wanted to actually take away. And it was like one of the more advanced English classes and it was multicultural literature. They wanted to like take that class away from us. Cause they're like, you don't really need it. But yet it was mandatory that we learn Shakespeare but not mandatory or even recommended really that we learn multicultural stories that are a lot more modern. And I can remember the short story I had to give a presentation on 
and it was so weird and fucked up. Uh, there was this mother whose daughter was, okay, I'm gonna fuck this up because I'm old. Remember, I'm old. I'm almost out of high school 20 years at this point. So there was this mother who was, this. her daughter was getting married and I don't know if the daughter didn't want to get married or what, but something about making a likeness of her out of uh, prawn shells, you know, like seafood shells. And, like, the doll either coming to life or, like, splitting open on their wedding night or... It was bizarre. And it was kind of about, like, obsession and just all that kind of stuff. And my brain was always like, this is amazing! Like, this... this is so much more intense than Shakespeare for me. But, uh, yeah. But to be fair, when everybody else was learning Shakespeare, I was over him because... Uh, the summer of going into seventh grade, I read The Tempest, I read Othello, I read A Midsummer Night's Dream, I read King Lear. I just had read, like at 13 or so years old, uh, all of the big, big things for Shakespeare. And I was tired of him by the time I got to him in ninth grade. So, yeah, I understand that. I mean, it is good to have a foundation, but like... They give you the foundations in the same way. They're always like, oh, Shakespeare, you have to know about Shakespeare. And it's like, okay, my brother, when he was in school, he had trouble with reading. And when my, oh, we finally won one, yes. And when my brother had trouble with reading, um, they're like, you should get him to read more to my mom. So my mom actually got him comic books. And he started reading comic books. And some of the teachers had difficulty with him having comic books. And my mom said, hey, comic books are reading. You know? And um, they didn't really like that too much, but they are reading. Manga is reading. Short stories are reading. Poetry is reading. I mean, it's all reading. It's literally all reading. Another thing she would do is put closed captions on the television so that we would learn how to spell things. So that was interesting as well. But my uh, brother is brilliant. He just has, uh, he learns better as auditory learner. And in school, if you're not a visual learner for the most part, you're fucked. You're like so ever loving fucked. <laughs> Evil Dungeons and Dragons books. I love Dungeons and Dragons. We played the hell out of that. When we were kids, I was the kind of kid who whose family had a rite of passage at 16 years old that we got a sword from the next oldest sibling. Like my oldest brother gave one to my older brother and then my older brother bought me one. And then when it came time to get my old, my baby brother one, I uh, skipped out on that because reasons. Because I don't know how my baby brother's parents would have felt at the time. So, but yeah. But yeah, we played a lot of different tabletop games. We played the Star Wars one. We played, um, I think there was a Dragon Ball one we played. We played Dark Matter. But I gotta tell you, my brother designed one based off of Dark Matter that was called Future Shock. And we were ourselves in the future with abilities that we claim to have. And my character was me, like, it was at 10 years in the future, and we were teens at the time. So, uh, my brother's like, okay, so you're a journalist, and you're living out in California. I'm like, why California? But anyway. And we would, like, be doing the, all these different things. Like, we had something called, like, the California Sun as our paper. And there would be something under the building we were in. So we had to go investigate the basement. And in the basement, on this, like, post, almost like Jesus on the cross, there was this guy hung there with a dagger through his chest. And uh, one of us actually was dumb enough to pull out the dagger out of the guy's chest. And the guy's name was Blood Scream. And he had red hair, and his eyes glowed green, 
And if you've ever seen the movie Fallen with Denzel Washington, where the guy, the devil or a demon, whatever, can body jump into different people and watch you, well, that's what he can do. And his eyes glow green. And he has two harbingers that are two little girls. Shit. Like Freddy Krueger does. Have you ever um, seen Nightmare on Elm Street? Where the little girls are like, One, two, Freddy's coming for you. It was basically that. But you remember the ice cream for Blood Scream? Uh, uh, yeah, it was the ice cream for ice cream. It was ice cream for Blood Scream. And the little girls had no fucking eyes. I guess because he looks through eyes, so they had no eyes. And honestly, the first time we played Future Shock, I was so fucking freaked out. And then there would be this guy that would like come toward me and he was all cut up and shit and he'd be like, let it rain glass. And as he did, like all of the windows would shatter inward and it was just really fucking creepy. It was really good. And we had a fucking like android that would follow us named Bombshell. And I had to fight a queen vampire who was a psychic vampire. Because apparently I have psychic abilities and all that. So it was really fun. It was really fun. I miss those days, honestly. But then eventually, you stop playing a while, and then when you go back, it's not as scary anymore, so... It kind of, uh, wasn't the same. Okay, let me travel around. Let's see if we can find some bear spots, eh? Okay, I'm traveling in a fucking circle. I just am. I, I am talented. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, I got him too, okay. So yeah, I really uh, enjoyed a lot of... Oh, I think we won another one. Holy shit. Very fucking nice. I, I applaud my teammates because that was not a me thing. I was running around in circles for the last minute. Pumpkin pie. Nice name. Very, very apt for the season. So yeah, it was really, really good series. But yeah, we had um, Lord Raptor, which was the king of the zombies, and uh, it would be the move to the music song from the old uh, wrestling game. I don't know if you know that one, but I think it was Raw 2 that had it, but he would be leader of the band and he would animate zombies with his music. Yeah, a lot of it was just so, so cool. And... Uh, I mean, I do miss it. I haven't played any kind of D&D now for a while. And the last time I played, I was the one running it. And let's just say one of my brothers didn't really appreciate it very much. And it was like an isekai type situation where, like, you went in through this thing. And it was a mixture of, like, dragons and spaceships. And it would, I had like months of notes and everything, and it just fell apart. So, but I used to run once in a while. I still have my dice. It's like how I used to be in the archery until my shoulders got too bad for it. But I still, you know, enjoy the thought of it. I really should start finding uh, crossbows and learning how to work with those, but... Crossbows aren't the same as uh, pulling the string back on your own weight. You know, I used to just, I used to shoot bow in our old barn for hours and hours. I had like these old doors we had that uh, were just from like renovation or whatever. Oh shit, I'm fucked. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Okay, let me just... Let me just cover up the mess you made in my house. A little bit at a time. Okay. We're doing fine. We're doing... Oh, no. Enemy. Enemy, enemy, enemy. And I'm missing. I'm missing. Oh, my God. No wonder I'm... No wonder I do bad in shooting games. No wonder I'm losing all the time in Fortnite. Yeah. You know, sometimes what works for you just feels right and... Even if you try something different. Although, I, I've been telling my friends, I want this uh, shirt that says, 
I drive a stick and it'd be a power wheelchair with a joystick on it. Cause I have a power wheelchair. I thought I, I thought I died. Literally thought I lost the exchange. I'm like, why are they showing me one of my friends? Like, here, I didn't fucking die yet. That was funny as shit. I literally expect to die so hard that I just fucking stop moving because I think I'm dead already. That That's funny. That is no self-confidence whatsoever right there. Oh, man. Yep, let's just get up here and get some of this. But yeah, I, I love the vibrant colors of this game, and this game is such a unique shooter. I mean, I like more basic stuff too, like I've been playing Fortnite a lot. But, you know, this is, like I said, definitely a different flavor, so. Yeah, I, I really want a shirt that says I drive a stick. Or I can drive a stick, something like that, you know. I played the first one a little bit. It had almost mandatory gyro. I stopped playing it. But my husband loves it, and it's the first Splatfest, so I thought, you know, I'll play it for a stream. But I'm not really, really into it, so... Like I said, I've been waiting more into Fortnite. Um, I don't build in Fortnite. I do no build. I just, I feel better with no build. Um, it's hard enough for me to keep track of what the hell's going on, so... Which is fine. Okay, let's just try to get some of this over here. Okay, that ain't gonna work, but I tried. Ah, oh, damn. I should have let off a bomb at the end. I love, like, Story of Seasons. I plan on doing a YouTube-exclusive video of Harvestella. Because the Harvestella demo came out. And uh, that really intrigues me. I really want a remake of Animal Parade. I loved Animal Parade. It's one of the best Harvest Moons. And if they like add stuff to it and redo it, I'm all for it. I also can't wait to play Rune Factory 3. I've never played 3. The first time I got into Rune Factory was the one with all the runies you had to balance to keep everything going well. And that was a fucking torture device. I think it was the Wii one. But then the husband convinced me that 4 was good when it came out. So I played through 4 and I'm looking forward to 3. Trio of Towns was amazing. They can redo that one too and give it back to us. I would like that one a lot. Um, I know they're redoing the one where you can get old, but I wasn't the biggest fan of that for like a lot of reasons. One, when I'm timed, I always get feel more pressure, and that creates stress. Two, there are only like three marriage options. And I know that you can marry whoever you want to now, which kind of opens it up a little bit, but still not a lot. Yeah, I can see where you'd like that one. It was a good one. You know, I have soft spots in my heart for certain ones, but yeah, Rune Factory 3 is coming, and I really want to play that one. I, I'm very much into that one. Uh, as far as, like, I love 4. But I hated the first one I ever played, so... We'll see. Husband assures me, assures me, that 3 is like 4, and not like the stupid one we played with the Rooney balancing. But I'm gonna have to see if he's telling me the truth. Because I'm not sure. I would think he wouldn't let me lead me astray. I'm also interested in Fay Farm. Because Fay Farm, while being indie, also has like full co-op. And I really am looking into that. I would love a full co-op game. It's like um Stardew Valley having co-op was an amazing thing to have for a farming game. Like, husband would stay at the farm and do things and take care of the animals and I would go into the mines adventuring and getting killed. Like, it was really cool. But like, 
we don't run mods on Stardew Valley, so a lot of it is we get the base game over and over again, which you can keep playing it, but like we did since we don't mod, we lose a lot of like really good stuff, you know? Because the modders are what's really gonna keep that game fresh. But I am looking forward to the haunted chocolatier. So I'll have to see what that's about eventually. And I've been playing Little Witch in the Woods a little bit, but not too much. I was thinking about doing a comfy stream of Little Witch in the Woods, because it's kind of got that vibe. But I don't know. Shit. I don't think my uh, streams do very well when I'm uh, just playing like really, really chill games. And I'm not a very calming streamer. I'm not like a screaming gremlin, but I'm not like um, very asthma, very cozy type. I uh, one talk way too much, I think. But me doing asthma or like relaxing things is just going to be way out of my league. I am not that kind of a person. I am not relaxing and that sort of thing. I am. Um, I'm not. I don't scream. Thank goodness, but uh, nor, like I said, nor am I relaxing. I just talk. And of course, my talking could be droning, so that I guess could work. I never thought about it that way. Uh, I, I just tend to stream what I like. I did a stream or two of. I did one stream and one video of Dreamlight Valley, the Disney thing everybody's going on about. And then I played most of it. Fuck. We both killed each other. I did most of it off stream. And I've been going through Monster Hunter. <laughs> I, uh, I don't really think I have a nice voice, but thank you. Someone called me a man the other day. <laughs> like, uh, he was like, can I join you for Monster Hunter, good fellow? <laughs> I'm like, oh man, my voice is too low to be, I guess, very feminine, but I'm okay with that. So, I have a uh, surprise for my viewers, maybe coming up next year, but I don't want to spoil it. But uh, let's just say, uh, if you know who I've been talking to a lot on Twitter and talking about how great they are for what they do, you can kind of maybe guess what's coming. And right now, I'm living on like my own merits of my own work, so... I'm not going to spoil that, but I'm trying to work it out. Oh, shoot. I could have got some more paint down there. Keep the anticipation. Ah, uh, we lost. Oh, bananas. Oh, we won. Wait the fuck, what? Hello, Mr. Cat. What the hell did you just say? I guess we won, chat. That's a surprise. Yeah. I think one time we won by like one tenth of a point and I was like, holy fuck. Like that is just balls to the walls. So I'm not going to ask you what your job is exactly, but what industry do you work in, Chow Chow? We, we all know that I am a uh, shit poster on Twitter. Actually, that's more my husband, but still. And I'm a streamer. I'm a disability activist and a poet, which means I'm poor, but that's kind of what I occupy myself with. I'm an editor of a magazine that I started, which I might be ending soon. And I've been a poet since probably most of you have been alive and that kind of thing. Calibrations for meta. Well, that sounds very technical. Do you like the job or did you just kind of like fall into it? Like, I don't know who starts out their life and goes, I'm going to be a calibration expert for medical devices. You learned it from the Navy. Ah, yes. Okay. Did you like your time in the military? I know some do, some don't. So... After high school, or in high school, the military kept calling me, and I'm like, I have cerebral palsy. I cannot walk. I don't really know what you expect me to do for the military. I cannot swim. 
I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> like... <laughs> that actually sounds quite serious. Like, I would be afraid of that job. Like, if you fuck up, there could be consequences kind of job. I, I'm not- I'm not in that. I'm not for that. Definitely not. That would terrify me. Legit. If you do this wrong, everything goes to hell. Well then, don't put me on it. If I'm timed or there's a lot of pressure, I sink like a stone. I, I am not good with pressure, and I am not good with uh, anything that technical. So, if I, if I were somebody to rely on for that, I would be not somebody to rely on for that. Uh, if I ever needed to like fly a plane, for instance, they're like, we'll just tell you what to do. I'm like, oh, I guess we're fucked. Like, there's no way I'm doing that shit. So, honest to God, I could, I could not. Absolutely not. Okay, if I just keep pressing forward and get little bits of green every, every time, I can just push them back and they won't cover every every little speck so that's fine okay now I gotta travel oops wrong way <laughs> 110 degrees no thank you uh, my in-laws are in Oklahoma and uh, I'm like why do you live in Satan's armpit like, why? Why is that a thing? They have, like, venomous snakes down there. Oh, I, I probably am a panicker. Like, one of my worst fears is, like, literally being trapped in a car as it's sinking. Honestly, one of my worst fears ever is to be that, because I know I would fucking panic and die. Like, immediately. Like, there, there is no chill. I have no chill. I panic, even in video games, I panic, I lose my way, I have no chill. Like, if you tell me that there's a race on right now and I have to, like, get to the end of the map, I would fucking panic and stall and just cry into my cornflakes. I am not good at anything like that. So don't count on me in a crisis, basically. <laughs> if they're like, you need to put the nuclear codes into Lucas so we don't die, I'm like, guess we're dying. Like... You parked on a dock and if oh god no that is my nightmare okay cuz okay imagine this you are like strapped into a vehicle in your 300 pound wheelchair your legs don't work very well if you can even get out of the wheelchair there's not a high likelihood you'll break up in one of the back windows you can actually get out of because you can't climb through one of the smaller front ones. Because let's say you're like 800 million pounds. You're fat as fuck. And you're going to die, basically. <laughs> oh shit, we lost. Oh, it couldn't last forever. Yeah, I know they tell you as soon as you can. Your best bet is to get the window open immediately. So you can get out as it the water rushes in. Or you literally have to wait until the car is totally sunk so the pressure equalizes so that you can open up the damn door underwater. And that, and it's not very likely because usually the water holds the door shut. So, yeah. Not, not, a, not a nice thing to think about. Some people are scared about being buried alive. I'm terrified of being trapped in a car underwater. Ah, a big communication error, not just a little one, a big one. Oh boy. Okay, let's try it again. But I'm terrified of that. But lucky me, I'm terrified of so many things. The, that's, the, that's the joy and the rapture of, of being me. Is that I, I'm just terrified of everything. Everything in existence. I have a tattoo of a dragonfly, but I hate all bugs. I'm terrified of fire. I'm terrified of heights. I 
<laughs> like, there is an exceptionally long list to everything I'm afraid of in varying degrees of deliciousness. Well, I love speed. That's that's one of my problems. Like, when I was little, uh, very little, my mom still had a decent relationship with my uh, her brothers, my uncles. And they would bring another fucking... Another fucking communication error is what they would bring. Yeah, I'm terrified of fire. But see, the thing is with fire is if you told me... There was somebody trapped in a house, and only I could crawl in and get them. I would do that. Like, if, if I had a chance to save someone else, it makes me feel differently about certain things. I don't know if that makes sense. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not good with literally anything. I'm, t I'm terrified of drowning, too, which is probably the car thing going on. But I love speed. So back when I was little... On the non-operational farm I grew up on. Uh, the first couple winters we had lived there, my mom, my older brothers, and I, uh, my uncle would come out with the snowmobiles, and me and my cousins and my brothers, we would all be going for a ride on the snowmobiles. And when I was little, I was in, like, first grade kindergarten, so keep that in mind. Right, yeah, exactly. If somebody's life is depending on it, I would go into a fire. Like, even if it were a stranger, but definitely someone I love. So, I get you there. But yeah, so we had the snowmobile set up, and so they would actually lift me into the snowmobile. And one of the adults would get behind me in the snowmobile, so at first they could, like, reach the pedals. But then I, like, figured out how to operate the speed myself. And my cousin, who was my best friend at the time, we were really young. She's not anymore, definitely not. But uh, my cousin would be on the other snowmobile, and we were the same age pretty much. She was maybe a year younger than me, so imagine like a seven and eight year old or a six and a seven year old. And we're on snowmobiles, no helmets. We are racing through the woods on these death machines. At the farm, we are like almost bumping into each other as we go along. We are laughing hysterically, and my aunt would be like, Slow down, girls, slow down! Like, the worst thing they could have did is taught me how to actually uh, do the gas. But I absolutely loved it. I actually really love speed. I'm not a speed junkie, but I absolutely love it when I can get it. So, that is one thing I like. I'm not a fan of, like, roller coasters and shit, though, but that's partly because, one, can't really get on them, but two, I get motion sick easily, but when you're going fast, it's not motion sickness. It's just fun. So that is one thing I'm, like, not scared of. <laughs> like, maybe the only thing. If you've ever seen, like, Wade Duck from Garfield and Friends, I I did not go into a thingy, did I? I did not go into a- wait, wait, wait. Did I do something wrong? I thought I was in here. Oh, I am in here. Aren't I? Uh, Hello? Yeah, like, oh wait, 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 Okay, hold on. I might have pressed the wrong damn button. Yeah, motion sickness is definitely a thing for me. Yeah, well, I joined Splatfest. Yes, okay. All right, now it says I'm I'm doing it. I apparently wasn't before, or something was happening. Maybe it was because they were changing the maps. Maybe it's because I'm dumb. I don't know. Either way, we're on our way. So... Yeah. You know, I used to love, like, the slight rocking. Like, when you're just in the water, and the water slightly moves, I used to find that very relaxing. Same thing with, like, being on a swing set. 
or like a rocking motion because I'm gonna let you in on a little secret for for me anyway I don't have unconscious movement like some people do like some people can like jiggle their leg or something when they're like talking and stuff and I can do that it's just it actually takes some of my attention to do that I can't just do it it actually requires me to be thoughtful and engaged with the movement and that's the way most things are unless I'm legit having a spasm <laughs> so when something can move me gently like rocking or whatever I actually really like that I've liked it since I was a baby to be rocked, but I didn't actually grow out of that. So like the movement where I can just be moved and not have to worry about like keeping myself moving has always been like really cool. If that makes sense. Because I don't have unconscious movement or subconscious or whatever kind of movement you call it. Like most people can where they just start moving something without any thought to it whatsoever. Okay, new maps, new disasters. Let's go. Looks like I can fall off here. But yeah, I don't know what movies I'm going to play for movie night. But I will figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out so that we can like do movie nights in Discord. I uh, the, the exclamation dis point Discord gets you to my uh, Discord URL if anybody does want that. No pressure, no stress. I have a YouTube that I put my archives on and a weekly, mostly, uh, video. Kind of like this, except I'm talking to myself, which I don't really have a problem with because I can do a monologue all day long. It's just that I worry about in like a year from streaming since I really don't do much with my life. Like, everybody's going to hear all of my stories, but since... No, nope, not everybody has heard my cult story where I was almost a cult leader. I might tell that one for Halloween, like I said to Zohar. I think it would be interesting for people to learn, like, what that's about. I still didn't kill him, and I shot him in the head. I thought I shot him in the head anyway. Perhaps not. See, this is why I'm not in the military. Although, to be fair, to be absolutely fair to myself, um... I am not good with like throwing things in real life, but like when I used to do bow, like archery, I was actually quite accurate with that, but like throwing knives and shit are horrible. Like if I'm trying to like save you by using a throwing knife to hurt someone else, uh, I would probably kill you. Like I would probably like right in the chest. Like when my mom would have me like throw the remote to the television. And I would actually, like, try to do that, and it would end up down the hallway instead of, like, in her hands. That, that's a real thing. <laughs> I don't know what happens, or why that happens, but it happens. Oh, damn. Let's, let's hide in here. Fuck. Never mind. But yeah, so... But yeah, I've also known a few people who've like been legit murderers, but those are kind of like sad stories. They're not like scary ones. Let's just say eventually my grandma had a boyfriend who was not a nice man and some of the company he kept was not nice either. And that's really all I have to say about that. You know, my grandma was one of those people who was like, anything a man can do, a woman can do better. And then um, she would always have to have a guy around to like love her or be with her or whatever. So it kind of really undersold her point. I feel like if you're going to be that much of a, oh, women can do this, women don't need that, then look at it and go but I need a man like every night and it's like you're kind of like telling on yourself oh damn we totally lost this is a really large map well larger than I anticipated that is an interesting thing for me to remember next game but yeah I want to do more music talk but I don't know how to do that without getting copyright slammed by uh, twitch so 
because I would love to like play my favorite songs like a radio show kind of and like talk about why I love them but I know Twitch comes on like really hard on certain types of creators for certain things. Yeah, that is true. You know, maybe she needed them for emotional support. Let's say grandma was down bad though, because grandma was down bad. She always needed a man in her bed, let's say. She needed someone to keep it warm, let's say. She was always one of those types of people. And I guess good for her, but at the same time, like I said, her last boyfriend of choice was uh, pretty awful. So not, not happy with that, but oh well. Uh, but you know, I'm, I miss the old broad, even though she was a tough one to live with sometimes. She was our next door neighbor because the uh, non-operational farm where we lived in the trailer, that was basically my grandma's property. It belonged to my great-grandmother uh, before my grandmother. And my great-grandmother was a really good woman up until she had her stroke. And then after she had had her stroke, uh, she was not uh, very happy to see kids anymore. So we never got to see our great-grandma as this nice welcoming woman who loved children. She always wanted us to be the, the fuck quiet and always, you know, wanted us to like be out of her sight line. And it was kind of like when you were over at great grandma's, it was kind of like, don't, don't piss off great grandma. Like keep the TV on lower. Don't watch it all. Just sit quietly. But, uh, my grandma was also part of those, uh, children should just do what you say. Not as you do see and not heard type things. Yeah, <laughs> always seemed mean in a loving way. Well, my grandma was actually uh, physically abusive to my mom and my uncles when they were kids. Um, and my grandma was kind of like controlling and everything, but in some ways, I don't know, she was really good around holidays and in a crisis, but um, most other times, grandma was rough. She loved you, but grandma was rough. It didn't help that when grandpa died, she started being like a secret drinker. But like, let's say you buy my grandma something for Christmas. Okay, chat. Quiz time. You see something you know it's perfect for your grandmother, but it's not on the list of approved gifts. Do you A, buy the gift you know would fit in line, or B, only buy something on that fucking list? Because I gotta tell you right now, if it's not on the list, it's wrong. And when you're opening gifts around the Christmas tree, my grandma would always say, what the fuck did you get me this shit for? Always. It had to be on the list of approved gifts. If it was not on the list of safe gifts, you were not safe. And she would let you know that. She would definitely let you know that, chat. Usually we didn't have lists, but with grandma you had lists. It kept you safe. But you know, some things about my grandma, like I said, were uh, good. Like, she used to be like a nurse's aide, factory worker, did a lot of different jobs. And so she wouldn't mind like, one time my mom had to go to a parent teacher meeting for my brothers. And I was like in the first grade and I was like vomiting and uh, having the diarrhea simultaneously. So every time one would happen, the other would happen pretty much. And so my grandma was actually there, like, taking care of me, like, literally wiping one end while my grandpa held the bucket at the other end, like, just to try to get me to get through the really bad everything. And I'd be apologizing, and she'd be like, oh, who cares, Dolly? It's just a bit of shit. Like, there was a room in your grandma's house nobody could enter. It sounds like the Bluebeard fairy tale. Like, that's all the heads of her ex-husbands. Like, <laughs> uh, with my grandma was like, she had a phone and like, if you didn't, if you answered the phone as the, her, one of her grandkids, it was like, don't answer the phone, it's grandma's property. And then like, when you didn't answer the phone, she was like, I was expecting a phone call. You should have answered that. So, like, you couldn't win, really? <laughs> so, yeah. 
But like I said, she was great in a crisis when you were sick or during a holiday. Like, my mom almost died when uh, she was 42. And I mean, she's, she's dead now, but uh, she almost died at 42 the first time. And um, she didn't want to go to the hospital because, oh, we got this. We got this. Oh, no, I didn't know that about the Pope. Makes sense. I've heard something about that, but not that it's a Polish uh, tradition. Interesting. Interesting. That That is really interesting. Are there special, like, linens in there or something? Like, what would be good for His Holiness? And what is the likelihood that somebody stops by, like, the Pope stops by... Like, is the Pope just randomly able to stop by? I mean, I grew up Roman Catholic. Like, my grandma was Catholic. Uh, we were basically uh, German and... Well, my grandma was basically German with a mix of other things. And um, my heritage is basically German and French for the most part. But I've never heard of the... He exactly, so why? Like... Is the Pope's, like, Pope mobile gonna break down and, like, right in the middle of, like, wherever the hell you live and be like, My good lady, I sense your Catholicness from afar. May I take part of your delicious food and maybe take shelter in your abode? Like, I don't know, like, a communication error has occurred. Okay, that's fine, Nintendo. At least it's not happening when I'm in the middle of a match and they're all bitchy at me, so. We got it. We got it going on. Did she keep, like, fresh kielbasa and pierogi? Did she actually keep them ready? Like, for him, like, a new batch, like, every few days or something? Because that would just be weird. Like... I mean, I've heard of hero worship, but it always weirded me out a little bit how Catholics always saw the Pope as, like, basically God on Earth. And it's like, isn't your God only supposed to be, like, God? Like, that's it? So, you're basically telling me you're, like, straight Polish. Can you speak it? I only speak English, and not very well, so... I had three years of German in high school. Ah, yeah, that's fine. I wasn't gonna be like, prove it, chow chow. Oh yeah, you speak it? Prove it? No, not no, no, nothing like that. I had three years of German, and um... Our school was to the point where my college, when I actually did the proficiency test, was like, are you sure you want to take this to know where you are? Because people say people from insert district here um, that they are actually, it's called an enrichment course. Like none of the professors at my college when I went, uh, they said that none of it was actually gonna get me anywhere. They just considered it cultural enrichment. That's how lax it was. It got to the point where like when you do the scavenger hunt as a Spanish and German student, I had to teach the Spanish kids how to pronounce like calendar and shit. Yeah, that you do. You do need a different... That is definitely true. You need different accent and keys and shit like that. Uh... Did your grandma make you listen to Bobby Vinton? Uh, my mom was, even though we're not Polish, my mom loved Bobby Vinton. Uh, and then she had the one that's like Melody of Love and it has Polish in it. You know, the one that's like, I, I don't want to do this because I'll fuck it up, but it's like, um, he's like, this thing in Polish means that I love you so. And then this thing in Polish means more than you'll ever know. And then something else means love you with all my heart. It's like called Melody of Love or something. I don't know. 
I'm gonna put it in my Discord later, and then the people who talk in my Discord, which is only like one, is gonna be like, what the fuck is this shit? So Zohar, if you're hearing me, get ready for that song later. The Bobby Vinton song. He also did the song Sealed with a Kiss. He did a version of that. Uh, he did uh, Soldier. The one that's like, I'm just a soldier or coming home soldier. It's very, very old music, but uh, I actually love that one. Um, he's talking about how he comes home from the military and how he he doesn't he came home without a purple heart so he's not coming home with like an honorable discharge or whatever but he said no that i've done my best so i don't really know like in the context of the song what it is i just remember the chorus which is like i'm just a soldier a coming home soldier no pur purple heart do i wear on my chest yeah anyway it's it's old music but you're, you're gonna get some bobby Vinton later in in the discord Uh, I will not know how to pronounce that delicious donut, actually. Uh, the only reason I know kind of sort of how to pronounce some Polish food is because I've eaten some of it. Like, my mom used to buy, like, what she used to call the Polish sausage. So, the kielbasa. Ooh, we won. Good, 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 good. That was not my doing. I had nothing to do with that. But that's cool. All right. I'm actually getting somewhere. But I won't be playing this after today, I don't think. On stream, we're off. Like I said, this is more my husband's jam. I just thought it would be an interesting one-off. I'm going back to Monster Hunter, and I want to do another um, stream of Dandy Ace, because Dandy Ace is that roguelike with the cards I played in the variety stream the other week. I think it was last week. And Dandy Ace is actually leaving the Game Pass service. So I'm not going to get to play it anymore after that unless it's on sale and I snag it at some point. So I'm going to do one full stream of Dandy Ace, which is a roguelike. And then I'm going to do, hopefully, the post game, the finishing up of Monster Hunter Rise. And with any luck, those two streams of Monster Hunter Rise will take us to the end. I'm not buying Sunbreak or whatever it's called because I don't see enough monsters in it to actually warrant the hefty price tag. I don't know much about that place actually. I've, I've never been more than like four hours away from home in my life. I just haven't been, like, the furthest I've traveled was, like, to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan because my family used to go camping around Iron Mountain, like Lake Antoine and such. Oh, I can't have spice, darn. But I'm sure it's not handicapped accessible very much anyway, which is one of the reasons I'd have to, like, stay to America or maybe Canada. Because so many places are, uh... I tried. So many places are not handicapped accessible because of the way their infrastructure is or how they treat disabled people or so on and so forth. So... I should really use the feature where I travel to my friends easier and faster. Oh, got him with the bomb, I think. Or somebody finished him off while I was trying to get him with the bomb. Either way, very good. I'll take it. Oh, shit. Looks like a Rainmaker. No. I think we're, we're gonna die soon. We're gonna die soon. Oh, fuck. Yep. There it goes. I did not know Japan would be handicapped accessible, actually. I mean, more than some countries, I would guess, but yeah. But they, by the way, just by looking at me, they would have a full-on heart attack, those poor people. So I, I will spare them the monstrosity that is me, this giant turtle. 
All right, yes. Key home. Let's get me going here. This reminds me of like Elmer's school blue, the blue and the orange. Or maybe like Frosted Flakes because of Tony the Tiger. We uh, took each other out. Yeah. Well, you know, I understand the being close to tourists thing. Everybody acts like everything's normal and it's it's not. It's not. And I'm dead again. I barely got a chance to drop one bit of ink. Oh, frack. Okay. I can actually do this from here. Oh, and I don't know where I put myself. Whoopsers. That's all right. We're almost there. Every drop is a good drop. Oh, shoot. Ah, I am not good with this. Part of it is my brain says like everything is the same. So like when I see somebody who's like orange and an orange thing, like I'll see movement and be like, oh, is that the thing I need? Oh, I don't think we won this. Maybe we did though. Oh, handily. Let's go. Alrighty. Yes, I'm doing flips and everything. Awesome. I wish we got like a shirt commemorating each Splatfest and we could keep it for our characters. Unless we do. Not bad. I have a lot of like loot. Maybe I should like play one more and then go get some clothes, but it doesn't really matter since I'm not going to be playing this anymore. So yeah, and then like I said, starting October, we're going to be doing uh, paranormal or spooky stories. We're going to be playing horror games or games like Pumpkin Jack. We're going to be doing video nights, movie nights in the Discord. So I'm hoping to have a variety of things. I might be stupid and doofy again and do like another craft video where I make another type of card. Or maybe some like Halloween earrings. I know that it's very weird to like mix in crafting, but crafting is one of the things I do, so people can just skip the video if they hate it. Remember, I'm like old enough to be some of your parents, so like I craft, it's what I do, it's an old lady thing, all right? So, but yeah, I make cards, I make jewelry, I you know, do like paper quilling, I do some painting. Um, I've done recently, it's been acrylic with sponge instead of a paintbrush. Um, I am not good at this shit. Not, not good at all, but I still do it. I'm like the only one in my family who can't really like draw or paint. Like the baby brother who's going to school for art, um, he was taught by like the older brothers like how to do some things and my mom even though she never took anything seriously my mom had undiagnosed ADHD and we didn't realize that until like the last few years of her life um she would always just do things till it was like good enough like she learned enough and then she would stop doing it so she had like a really detailed picture of our cockatiel at one point named Fritzy and she did a like a picture of me as my first like um preschool photo and then she stopped exactly our food is can be art not just presentation but taste you know and i would much prefer it taste good than look good but both is a plus uh, my mom was a very 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 good cook um she was making uh, scram not scrambled eggs, fried eggs at the stovetop when she was four years old. She was cooking that young. And uh, I don't always feel like that was a choice she had, but she was always cooking that young. And she taught my uh, older brother, not my oldest one, but my older one, a lot of what he knows. Right, yeah, it was so hard for my mom to teach us a recipe. Hey mom, how's your cheesecake? Oh, you put in some of this and, and some of that and until it looks right or, or a handful of, of this and like, oh, eyeball like two cups. And I'm like, no mom, you can't eyeball two cups. 
You can, Dolly. <laughs> like, hey, Mom. Like, yeah, I miss that lady. I miss that lady. Uh, she'll be gone two years in February, and uh, I killed myself. Joy, I knew that was going to happen at least once before the end of stream. I'm glad I didn't prove myself wrong, because that would mean I was actually smarter than I looked. Uh, oh well. I think this will be, like, the last splatterini we do, and then I'll wrap up for the stream. But yeah, my mom eyeballed everything, everything. It took so long to get her, like, peanut butter balls, her peanut butter ball recipe, which I really should make this Christmas. I love her peanut butter balls. They were a staple, like, I still didn't kill them, and I ended up dead instead. Because, of course, I did. But yeah, um... <laughs> I'm goofy. Okay, here. Yuck, yuck. Okay. Let me go here. Oh, and I didn't do it right. I had to press A. Okay, there we go. But yeah. But I actually got her peanut butter ball recipe. Her peanut butter balls are amazing. Most people use powdered sugar. Do not use powdered sugar. That sucks banana. Do not use powdered sugar at all. But yeah, I got that one. I got her cheesecake recipe. I got a few of them, but not enough. Like I said, my older brother, he was taught by her, so I'm sure he knows more, but... Yeah. You know... People say music is a time machine because it takes you back to like when you were in high school and stuff, but... Also... It isn't just music, it's food. Certain food can take you somewhere else. Certain food can take you back to your mom's kitchen, or take you back to like grandma's like Christmas parties, or wherever it is. So, food can actually be a time machine in itself. Oh please, oh please. Alrighty, so, I think we lost again, but we'll see. No, we won. I was just focusing on their color, not ours. We won, handily, very nice. Always good to end on that W. Always good. So at the beginning it was a bit rough, but uh, didn't end up that way. That's good. Yeah, my baby brother was talking about that, uh, about bonding, and he's like, I don't break bread with just anyone. And I thought in a way that was a little odd, but in a way I totally get that. Because, you know, you have to like trust people and, and like them well enough to be there while you consume food and put up with their food habits and everything. So, okay, what's going on over here? Get advice. What the fuck? By the way, they always make him look like a guy, but one of the cats looks like a calico almost. Or I was playing, no, 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 it's Monster Hunter. That's right. The Palicos, they try to make look like boys, but they're actually girls because most Calicos would be girls. Unless their race actually does something different. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up now. And uh, say goodbye. But thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, Avalon, for the raid. We might raid someone ourselves. Uh, who are our potential victims for today? There's Otter, but ACP is back as well. Oh, it's ACP's return music night. Oh, so, I assume that's where you Yeah, so we're gonna pop in ACP's stream now. He is just back from Canada, back home to Mexico, and he does Clone Hero. So, usually you have to do the um, requests on his Discord, but it is still a fun time. So, no, thank you for coming, Chow, and Zohar, and Avalon, and everybody. I appreciate you all so, so much. Next week will be Dandy Ace, uh, Monster Hunter. I'll be kind of throwing out weird ideas for October, because next week is the last week before the best month of the year. So I'll see you guys then, and please take care of yourselves, okay? Bye!